special times. Yeah, oh, special times. Oh, yeah, 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 um, and that is because of uh, of a sexual accosting that occurred very publicly at the hands of our next guest. It was it was something. It was everything we hoped it would be. He is the host of the Ben Shapiro Show on the dailywire.com and uh, now it's growing I think it has millions of plays legendary his debate with Chink Uyghur Ben thank you for being on the show sir hey thanks for thanks for having me as always I mean it's always wonderful to to see you and watch you dance and just think to myself what have I done with my life Yes, I know, I know. Imagine me looking at myself on the monitor. I look at it and I just go, wow, even I don't like myself. <laughs> hey, so Shank Uyghur, and now you're making the rounds. You're, you're everywhere. It's like chlamydia. I see you everywhere now. You're on Joe Rogan. Uh, and I mean, it's complimentary. By the way, you got yourself checked, right, after the debate? Because you went in deep. What was it like for you, prepping, getting ready? What did you expect? We have Dinesh D'Souza on next, which we'll talk about with him. It was a big turning point in the Shank thing because he yeah. always went low. What were you expecting? Yeah, so I think that, uh, you know, I'd watched the last couple of debates. I always kind of scout out my opponents in debates. I'd watched Chank's debates with uh, Ann Coulter, and then I watched his debate with Dinesh. And it seemed like it was the same tactic over and over, which was he would pull some quote from 10 years ago that somebody said, and then he would, and then he would say, well, I demand that you defend this. And then as soon as they start defending it, he would immediately swivel to the crowd, like physically swivel to the crowd, and then say, what he's really saying, he's racist. Right, that, that, was, the, that was the routine. See, I hear uh, your impressions, and, so, and I wonder what I'm doing with my life, but I, I want you to continue. Yeah, exactly. So I, so I prepped for it like that was what was going to happen. Like, uh, like he was going to come after me, you know, with quotes that are 15 years old and try and take something out of context. And so I had, you know, with me a, a stack of crap that was just like I, I, was, I was fully prepared. If he, if he had gone low, then we would have talked Armenian genocide for an hour. That's now. what like, I was going like, to ask was, you. That, that was my immediate follow-up. Was Armenian genocide included? Yeah, I mean, that, that, there was definitely material there. If he had, if he had called me an Islamophobe, uh, I would have read quotes that he had stated about Islam back in 2005. Like, I, I really had prepped it, uh, and so I was ready to go. And I think two things sort of threw him off. One was that in the green room, I was very cordial to him, but I don't think that would have mattered to him too much. I think that what really threw him off is that the last couple of times with Ann and with Dinesh, when he did those debates, there were— it was it was definitely a majority Young Turks Army room, right? I mean, it was definitely his people, uh, and so you can play to your people. When when your people are there, you play to them. When he walked out, I mean, first of all, the crowd that showed up for my town hall was supposed to be like 300 people. They didn't move the room because it was a thousand people who showed up, and then for the debate. They originally had it slated for a thousand-person room, and three thousand people showed up, and probably two thirds of them were people who were fans of the show. So that meant that he walked out and he got booed. And so I think in that moment he realized, okay, if I go low and Shapiro hits me with Armenian genocide, it could, I mean, it could le legitimately end my career. I mean, it could be a serious problem. No, I, mean, I don't think that were, there was that amount of forethought. I think uh, he had just seen the feedback from the Dinesh thing. We, you know, we'll have Dinesh on That's afterward. That's possible, too. Dinesh is, is obviously a, a formidable debater, he, but he's used to a certain level of decorum with, like, Hitchens, or I think he would debate with Dawkins. Even though they would vehemently disagree, they wouldn't go, your wife divorced you, it's bullshit. You know, that wasn't what they did. Right. Um, and, uh, by the way, did you at any point when he was – literally say, and I'm not misusing literally, but when he was literally saying, of course, did you feel like you were possibly debating my impression of, of Jane? There, there, were, there were a couple of points where, I, was, where I, I started grinning because it's like all of a sudden you, Crowder's in my head. You know, I'm just looking across the room and it's like, it's like those old Popeye cartoons where you're stuck on a rowboat with somebody and they start looking like a hamburger. I'm, I'm looking across the stage and suddenly Chank, uh, Chank looks exactly like Steven Crowder in the Chank outfit shouting, of course, Google it. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, listen, it, I, I was happy with it, with it just because I was happy he stayed substantive. I mean, for an hour, it was actually a pretty substantive debate. I mean, we did healthcare and we did taxes and it was only at the very end he tried to drop in the Southern strategy crap, which of course doesn't fly with me because I know too much about that stuff. So it was, uh, he tried that with, with Dinesh for an hour and every time Dinesh tried to get a, a word in edgewise, he would then demagogue the issue. Trump but, Dominion, uh, uh, Trump Dominion, you're bullshit. That was right, exactly. I think you were ready for this. I think a lot of people, there was sort even just two years ago, it was the era of, well, we're legitimate media. And so Young Turks were just seen as YouTubers. And now we know that they're every bit as big and influential as traditional media. So we've done our homework. So that, where you were prepared for it, you understood what, what it is that they brought to the table. And I also think, again, there was a turning point where people have realized that that's what Shank does. And people have seen his playbook. But I do want to ask you some more questions afterward. I wouldn't necessarily say he was super substantive or that it was unbelievably cordial. Uh, but I do, well, I think you were, but I do want to, let, let's roll a couple of clips. Let's see the first one for people who haven't watched the debate. Please go watch it. I think they have the whole debate up at dailywire.com. Uh -huh. A couple of highlights. Let's see the first one. If, if money was speech, well, then if you go to a hooker and you say, oh no, uh, officer, I was just talking to her. Okay, <laughs> money is not speech. 
Final point here. When you say money in politics is bad, again, I ask you, Buddy Romer gave you $4 million to start TYT. What did he expect in return? Should he not have given you money? Was the money not speech? It was just money, after all. It's just like a hooker, I assume. So are you the prostitute? How did this work? It is every bit as bad as I thought it would be. Um, but that was pretty, I think it was substantial because he was trying, I wouldn't say getting personal, but again, trying to imply character flaws of manipulating elections and you flip that on him. So I think even when he was trying to present a somewhat cordial appearance that wasn't what was really happening, uh, for more proof, let's, let's go to another clip. Naki Jared, are we ready? Yep. All right, let's go to the clip. If you want to get money out of politics and then you said the Young Turks cannot donate money to politicians, I'd say, of course, that's the whole point of getting money out of politics. <laughs> young Turks is super successful. We have 80 million uniques. It's, it's wonderful. Do you think Thank Bernie you. Sanders would care more if you gave him $10,000 or if you dedicated your entire network to kissing his ass for an election cycle? <laughs> He didn't choose the thug life, but God chose his people. Uh, you said you, you just, you prepared for him. Some people take a different approach. With debates, it's just be generally prepared. Like there are fighters who say, I never watch tape on my opponent. I just worry about me. Now I've always uh, taken a different approach. I'm, I wouldn't consider myself anywhere in your league as far as debating, but we happen to have a lot of leftists in the show. I think you need a base level of being prepared for anything. You know, it's jack of all trades, master of one is the original term, and then watch tape to prepare as best as you can for this individual, especially someone like Cenk who goes rogue. How do you prepare yeah. in general for your debates? Was this different? I mean, it usually. really does differ by person. So, you know, there, there are people who have greater expertise on a specific topic than I do, right? I mean, if I were to debate somebody on global warming, I'd really want to do a deep dive into global warming before I did the debate because they probably have a higher level of expertise on the particulars than I do before I do my research. Um, but, you know, when it's a general debate, like with Cenk, uh, then you sort of just have to look at his tactics. So the truth is that the stuff that we ended up debating on was not stuff that I had prepped. The stuff that we ended up debating on was was almost like the, there was a list of questions that the moderator was was going to talk about, and that went out the window pretty much right away. So it just turned into a general debate about all these issues. Like I knew that Chank likes to talk about money and politics, so I'd done my research about you know where he got his funding, for example, which you see in those clips. But as for, a general former matter, Republican uh, like, governor, right? Louisiana. What was that? Wasn't it former Republican yeah, yeah, governor? Yeah, in Louisiana. And then I also mentioned, you know, right after I said that uh, about uh, about him receiving money from Buddy Romer, I said, you know, are you in the pay of the Qataris also about Al Jazeera? Like I had, you know, I, I'd, I'd done the research on that sort of stuff because I figured that was going to come up. But most of the stuff I prepped didn't actually come up. I mean, I, again, I had like, I, I had pages and pages of research that I'd done to prepare for him going rogue in a, in a number of certain ways. And when he didn't do that, then it just turned into sort of a normal political debate. And that's the stuff that's, that's sort of my bread and butter. So nor normal political debate about issues like health care and tax, tax rates, that's stuff that I can do off the top of my head because I've, I've just been doing it for so long. I, I, like, I, like, I would say, that, I, I'd say this. If it were Dinesh who had the debate with Chank on those topics, Dinesh would have done fine. Right, like that. The, the, the it issue was meant was, to. The issue, yeah, the issue was he just went to prison and divorce. It really is. You know, Dinesh is a, is a good boxer. Marcus of Queensbury rules and the way that some of these debates are they're just MMA I mean and and it, it's it's fine when you go and fight in Conor McGregor thinking that it's going to be boxing rules but you know I, I recommend that if Conor McGregor is losing in the 11th round that he if he's going to lose anyway he may as well just throw a roundhouse kick it at Floyd Mayweather knock him out and then that's the end of the debate so just to save face and say you're a boxer you'll yeah, do you get nothing you'll do Nothing. That's his, that's what he does. <laughs> uh, wouldn't that be the greatest end to any match ever, though? Like if they have this whole boxing match and McGregor's just getting his ass kicked because he's not a boxer, and then at the very end he's like, you know what, just screw it, just screw it, and he just he roundhouse Chuck Norris roundhouse kick to the face. Mayweather goes flying out of the ring, and then he's unconscious, and, and you see the referee just go pick up his arm because he won. That'd be amazing. It'd be great TV. I also would pay to see you roundhouse kick Chank, but you know he'd be wearing the proper headgear because we're civilized here. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's odd. We've never once been invited to Politicon. Now, I do think that Chank has specifically requested we not go, and I don't blame him after we showed up to Chank's panel as Chank. Um, but I remember years ago when Lee Doran had a very small channel, Chank invited him out to Politicon. It was in a room with like maybe 50 people. Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing. Got very personal. And what he tries to do is cut people off at the past. Okay, right? This is what Republicans do when they say this. But really, and, and that's actually a very clever debating technique. Yeah, it's the same it thing is. in combat where you learn, okay, he, you know, I'm going to step away from his power and counter. Same kind of issue. 
And uh, he would hand pick people. There was a thing he would pick on this channel when I had 50 something thousand subscribers. Couldn't get enough of it apparently. And now it's like our name is Voldemort. He won't even speak of it. Um, so when did you know that you were invited to Politicon? And was this a mutual decision or did, did they just offer Chank you and he accepted? No, so it was, it was sort of mutual. So what happened is that I had done Politicon last year. I debated, or two years ago, I debated Sally Cohn, uh, and that drew a big crowd and got some attention. Uh, and then this year, obviously, we've grown in size since then. I mean, we, there, we have a lot more followers since then. And so Politicon approached us, and uh, they gave us a list of people. And they said, well, you can be on this panel or this panel or this panel, or you can do a debate. And I said, well, I'd obviously prefer to do a debate than a panel because what the hell. Uh, and they gave us a list of people who uh, to debate. And we, we were the ones who actually said, you know, if we're going to do this, give us Chank. Let's do this thing. Uh, and then Chank's people were, and then Chank's people were like, yeah, that sounds good. And then if you noticed, like in the run up to it, he was so I cocky. Also didn't do, <laughs> he was so cocky. I was well, like, I, I'm going to bump the floor with him. In the run up to it, I, I didn't do what I think I actually. If you remember the debate with Dinesh, he le leads off by saying, "Well, Dinesh, you came in here and you said that you were going to kick my ass." Right? I didn't do a lot of the kind of trash talking boxing match stuff beforehand. Uh, instead, I basically said, "Let's have a cordial conversation." And that sort of forced Chank into a corner a little bit, because now, if I'd said it's a boxing match, then he could come out and he could do the whole, you know, he, you say you're going to kick my ass, well, you're a jerk! You know, and, and instead, uh, instead, I had said, let's have a cordial conversation, and so it became, okay, who's the first person who's going to punch below the belt? And if we don't punch, if he doesn't punch below the belt, then it's, the, the debate is not going to go in his favor. If he does punch below the belt, that's what I was prepared for. So I was prepared for he was going to punch below the belt. If he had done what, what his typical tactic was, I was going to actually do what, back to him what he does, right? I was going to deconstruct his tactic. So if and I, I, I think that's something. different about you. And I think that's important to note. And this is kind of something we do on this show. We always say we match intensity. We had a, my first Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu instructor when I was a white belt. He said, you know, he was Brazilian. He said, if you go, if you go mild, they're going to go mild. If you come spicy, your, your partner going to come spicy. Spicy. And that was, we always learned, you know, you give and take. And so that's how a white belt rolls with a black belt. You don't hurt each other. He's also an Italian cook. <laughs> no, no, no. That was what he said. You're going to go spicy. So um, we fight. <laughs> And, and I remember this because it was very clear, like, you match the intensity of your opponent. And that's where we've had super civil dialogues with Mark Duplass. But when Christopher Titus came on and just said, you don't care about X amount of children dead with guns, you do have to address it. And, and I think you do that well because most of your conversations are like this, are productive. I do think Cenk went a little below the belt with a couple of them. But, uh, but you're not afraid to hit back. And I think that's the big difference generationally is you don't go there, but you are willing to match intensity. Would you, would you say that's a fair assessment? I do think that's a fair assessment. And I think that m this is, I mean, not to, not to get broader, but I think that this is one of the reasons that Trump won is because there was a feeling like he's willing to not only match intensity, but go further than the intensity level that's necessary. And uh, if you're on the right and you've been watching Republicans get kicked around for years, you figure, okay, who's going to punch back? Trump's the only one who's willing to match intensity. And we can't do the kind of Mitt Romney-esque let's have a cordial debate routine when they're saying that you're strapping dogs to the top of cars and putting women in binders and putting y'all back in chains. And so Trump never felt like that. So I think a lot of Republicans resonated to that, right? So I think that that's, that's sort of the same thing here. Uh, that, that's been my shtick for a long time, though, is the, is the idea that if you go low, I'm happy to do that. I mean, that's, that's been true ever since Piers Morgan. Uh, so th th that's nothing new. Although you didn't strangle the tranny who grabbed you on that show. Well, there is, I, <laughs> I would have paid good money uh, for so you to just go back that. and go, huh? I can do the Vulcan death grab as well and just see what and just let the cards fall where they may. Well, also, uh, th there's that would not have gone well for a variety of reasons. I mean, if you, th that's one of those things where it's like if you do that and and you knock somebody who's transgender off a bar stool in, in the CNN studios, you go to jail. And if you don't, then you just got your ass handed to you by uh, by. Uh, former Bob Turr. So that's so that, that's just not... not. <laughs> There's only one way to handle it. Just a gentle sack tap. Just So that way you, you, you get them or you go, oh, proven wrong. I tip my hat to you, sir. That's the only way. College... Again, I wonder like what I'm doing tap. with my life. I, I, I well, like I, you. you know, listen, don't wonder anymore because the question's been answered. Okay, let me give you w one final question. Is there any inside baseball, anything that happened behind the scenes that people don't know about? Did you meet Anna Kasparian? Did something happen behind the scenes? Was there something? There's something. I see you smirking. Did she leave her shave kit behind? <laughs> I, so you know, I, I think that uh, the only thing that, that the only thing that happened behind the scenes is that it was it was very weird because they moved to the entire venue like within an hour, and so we moved over there, and they take us to this tiny green room, uh, and the green room is legitimately like. Chank and Chank's assistant and me. And so it's just the three of us sitting there talking for a while. Uh, and uh, so that, that had some, some interesting moments that uh, I don't really want to get into, but it was, it was, uh, it was interesting. I, I'll, I'll put it that way. It was interesting. And then afterward, uh, I'm not sure how happy Chank was with the whole thing, just because, again, I'm not sure that he was used to the idea of there being this many people who are not pro him in the crowd. 
Uh, I mean, honestly, we were shocked by it. We were shocked. We walked out, and we were, well, I was figuring going in that every year, I, mean, I believe TYT is an actual co-sponsor of Politicon. So I was expecting to walk out there and it to be an entire army of TYT fans. And when we walked out there and it was like two to one against Chank, uh, that, I think, dramatically changed the terms of engagement a little bit. Which actually tells me the audience was pretty civil. Your audience was pretty civil because it sounded like half half. It sounded pretty much. It, I wouldn't have guessed two thirds. We kind of guessed half half. But your audience isn't as much of the, the trained seals who just clap when you mention someone's prison sentence or divorce. Uh, I was really glad to see it. I hope to see more like this. Uh, I, I was glad that it was as productive as it was. I think you did a great job. Yeah, I have turned. Listen, and I will say this. Like, you know, we I, I rib you a lot because you know your Tumblr sucks. But I will say this. Um, you are like <laughs> I mean, the new. It travels right horribly. Here. Look at this hand etched. I don't know what people are thinking. When you see someone coming up, I mean, I've known Ben for almost a decade now. It is like I used to recommend for a long time. People say, what do you recommend I read? I would say Thomas Sowell. When I was uh, John Stossel, I know a lot of people don't necessarily think of him first. Great books. And I will say this. I recommend Ben Shapiro to a lot of first timers. Shapiro, Levin. I think he's become one of those prolific writers and debaters. And I think people would do well to study his blueprint. He is kind of the guy to look to when it comes to this and being prepared. There you go. There's a compliment. That's what you're doing with your life. He came here for that. Dailywire.com, the Ben Shapiro. Shapiro show available everyone on iTunes. Ben, thank you, sir. I know you're tired. Go, uh, go have some Manischewitz and relax. I definitely will. Thanks so much. And, and try to recover from the circumcision you recently underwent along with those side locks. So. <laughs>